Hey there, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome back. It's another uh, Freedom from Atheism podcast here on Red Co Religion, where we say there are two. Wait a minute, we got the wrong cell, we got the wrong slide up. Let's find that right one. Um, um, it is okay. Let me get it up again. Sorry, we've already messed up our first live stream of the night. <laughs> Max is all over the map. It's crazy, it's horrible, it's a train wreck. Welcome to Red Pill Religion's Freedom from Atheism Foundation podcast, where we say it is okay to criticize any religious or non-religious group, ethnicity, or culture, especially its leadership and most prominent members. Oh, and by the way, guess what, atheists? You are a religious group, and we do not accept your claims that you're not. So just so you know, we are running a fundraiser. Freedom from Atheism Foundation is separate from us. We are, you know, we don't run... Freedom from Atheism Foundation. Instead, we're currently running a fundraiser where we'll be collecting two hundred dollars for them, and 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 about we're hoping to make, raise money to raise studio equipment and better podcasting software. Since we can't seem to uh, get the attention that the intellectual dark web people are uh, do, and we're having to find some way to get on a stable platform despite all the censorship. But in any case, we're on BitChute, so please do find us on subscribe to Red Pill Religion on BitChute, and please go to the Freedom from Atheism Foundation page on Facebook. Now, I am joined tonight by one of my very favorite YouTubers and a longtime uh, YouTube buddy. Say hello to everybody this evening, Deflating Atheism. Hello, everyone. Freedom from Atheism Foundation fans should absolutely go subscribe to Deflating Atheism, which is politics-free content. Just be warned, on Red Pill Religion, we do talk politics. The Freedom from Atheism Foundation doesn't necessarily endorse our politics at all. Um, but this is going to be purely about content that's been on Freedom from Atheism Foundation. First off, they were kind enough to endorse the fundraiser. Thank you. And so let's see what other stories we've had on Freedom from Atheism Foundation in the last week. Oh, yes. Uh, well, this is nice. I thought that atheism never killed anybody. But an atheist man was sentenced Wednesday to three terms of life prison for shooting and killing three of his neighbors, all religious students in the college town of Chapel Hill back in 2015. I'll bet Jim Majors over at the Freedom, uh, over at Atheist Republic will not comment on or acknowledge this. Mm -hmm. I bet you Sargon of Akkad of the intellectual dark web will not acknowledge this. And they'll say, <laughs> nobody murders in the name of atheism. I'm sorry, when you sit and read a bunch of hate propaganda against Christians, sooner or later, a bunch of Christians get hurt. That's how that works with anything. Um, and uh, uh, this guy, I don't, I don't remember. You, you just know this guy was a member of... Internet atheist forums. We've now normalized thinking it's funny to abuse and beat up and even kill Christians in the United States. And, and, and I really do hold uh, multiple members of the intellectual dark web account uh, responsible for that. And yeah, I'm going to keep mentioning them because if anybody wonders why I keep mentioning the intellectual dark web, my rant about them is, is that they are pretending that they are free speech heroes. But multiple members of the intellectual dark web have smeared and defamed and even helped deplatform others, smeared and defamed us. Sargon of Akkad, for example, is just notorious for, for, for his maltreatment of Christians that isn't very funny. Um, and has even, a, you know, people on his team have threatened to assault us. We reported it. Nothing happens. Um, the, uh, we are hoping to become a discussion leader on, on one of the intellectual dark web forums to challenge some of these people because they pretend that they're free speech heroes. But in any case, I remember, you know, last time there was an atheist murderer who'd been hanging out in, in, in atheist forums. There was Sargon of Akkad saying, well, it obviously had nothing to do with atheism. Well, yeah. you liars. You liars. You constantly say the most vicious crap about Christians. Constantly. You do it to others, too. And you just know Christians won't fight back, although at some point they might. Um, yeah, I, I think more religious people in general should notice when ideological atheists start saying garbage like religion poisons everything and religion is delusion and religion is a disease of the mind 
and we need to get rid of religion to advance society. This is, this is totalitarian rhetoric, and it's not funny. Yeah, e even when they say, oh, uh, you know, religion uh, holds back science and technology, which, you know, A, first off, fails as a historical claim. But, uh, I mean, that if, if religion seriously did hold back uh, uh, science and, and technology, that would really give people an incentive to, to eradicate religious people by force, as historically uh, uh, totalitarian regimes have. They, they, they've used that lie, basically, the historical canard, that religion stands in the way of, of you know, technological and scientific progress to eradicate, uh, you know, uh, religious populations, basically. So, yeah, it has a horrible history, that claim. Yes. And, and I've had enough of the lie that that's communism, not atheism. Yeah. No, shut up. It's not true. Multiple secular regimes have done things like this, and not in the name of communism but in the name of state-enforced atheism, state-enforced secularism. It's barbaric and it's wrong, and it's, it's, it's as evil as racism. In fact, I would argue that it's more evil than racism. Um, at least if somebody hates you for your race, uh, uh, you know just, well, that's not something I can control, and your hatred is irrational, and I will hang out with people who are of my race or who don't hate my race. End of story, right? That's, that's all you need to do. These people want to persecute you for having thoughts they don't approve of and beliefs they don't share. Mm. It's ridiculous. Um, all right, so anyway, let's move on. Freedom from Atheism Foundation, let's see. Uh, Nebraska school that declared Candy Cane's too religious pulls yearbook with a Christian symbol on it. Yeah, Freedom from Atheism Foundation says, shame on Elkhorn PTO members, that to be parent-teacher organization members, for having such a lack of consideration for the children who chose the cross for their yearbook cover in their secular jihad to eradicate religious expression. Should they all resign their positions immediately? Yes. This is why I actually have said unironically that, you know, when faced like with people like Jimmy, like, like so many else, uh, so many atheist ideologues, like a God sod even, I would rather be ruled by uh, like, like, like as a Christian, I would rather be ruled by Sharia law than these p kind of people. It's just disgusting. It's, it's, it's not even really, it's at least the Muslims have a respect for the Christian religion. Most of them, these people are just vile. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, you know, uh, it is horrendously expensive to, uh, reprint a whole run of, of, uh, yearbooks. So uh, that's like thirty thousand dollars because I know some kids were doing the the AOK -okay symbol and they had to run a you know a rerun of the whole yearbook. So yeah, what this of course does, of course, is cement hatred for the the the, the secular regime and for this school board. N and no, nobody needs to. Say, I mean, are we going to say oh Christians shouldn't hate? Um, all right, maybe hate is the rhetorical wrong word. But righteous fury and loathsome anger towards uh, pagans and tax collectors. Treat them like pagans and tax collectors. These people are, the, atheism poisons everything it touches. It truly, it does. Truly, it does. Um, okay, what's the next story? Church attendance links uh, with suic reduced suicide risk, especially for Catholics, the study says. I am not surprised. I am not surprised at least. Now, you know what you know what the the un the the, the dodgy pseudoscientific rationalization they'll have for that is that Catholics have been brainwashed to think they'll go straight to hell if they commit suicide and to believe in a hell. And since if you're an enlightened atheist, you won't believe in a hell you'll be more likely to, you know, commit suicide, right? When it makes sense. Um, have you heard that line of reasoning? Because I yeah. have. And, 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 and that kind of boomerangs on anybody who says that because A, you presume there's no hell. Uh, you know, we've got real evidence there is one. B, you're not aware that the suicide issue is acknowledged by most Christian sources to be tricky because the question is how much in their right mind were they when they did it? Um, but the, the, 
what that would point to if they were to make that argument oh it's just your irrational fear of hell what you've just admitted is that if you're an atheist who doesn't believe in an afterlife you're more likely to kill yourself i mean that's exactly what a study like this also shows that you're more likely to kill yourself if you don't think there's a god and there's quite a few statistics that show that that's true and that actually atheists are about eight times like more likely to commit suicide than the general population they're mostly male by the way mm. and uh um uh, so i mean this booms boomerangs around and is consistent with other research make sense yeah okay did i talk too much there <laughs> no no Okay. Should I just move on? Do you want to have anything you want to add to this? No. Oh. All right. I said all that needed to say. Once again, Max says it all. Mic drop. Okay. Moving on. Freedom from Atheism Foundation. This got some real butt hurt in one of the atheist groups that I'm that I'm a mod in. By the way, everybody should know I really am leaving uh, this Facebook account, and I'm leaving Facebook forever, pretty much. I'll probably keep a teeny private one um, that I just. Don't let hardly anybody contact me on except for private messages. But uh, in any case, uh, the the freedom the the uh, I should give a shout out to the guys in the atheists versus theists no bands group. And I'll go ahead and post this in there because this got a lot of butt hurt from those guys when I posted it there. I reposted it from Freedom from Atheism Foundation. Look at this this chart: religion of Nobel Prize winners between 1901 and 2000. 65.5% are Christian, 21.1% are Jewish, um, by, by religious affiliation, by the way, not by ethnicity. Uh, only 7% agnostics and, uh, uh, and so-called free thinkers um, who are really just, free thinkers are really just super spastic atheists. Um, and then a certain number of Muslims and Hindus and a few other religions. Uh, once again, we can say that atheists are slightly overrepresented as to where they are in this general population. I know the world population of atheists is at around six, five or six percent. Um, it's actually trending lower than six percent. So um, it's actually trending more toward five percent, according to Rodney Stark. So. Once uh, atheists do have like a, a small, small advantage there, they are at seven percent. Actually, let's see, the free thinkers are three point four, so that's ten point four percent. Yeah, the atheists are punching above their own weight class. They, you know, they're only about five percent of the population, maybe six, but they're pulling in uh, a little over ten percent. So I guess atheists are scientific geniuses, don't you? <laughs> Yeah, and they they have a, a three point advantage in IQ. So you know they're they're out there uh, uh, battling uh, Thomas Aquinas in, in the in the intelligence yeah ring. Yeah, yeah. By the way, anybody out there who has been fooled from the online atheist skeptic forums and the BS they're teaching you in your garbage social science classes, any every study claiming that atheists have higher IQs than the general population is easily shown to be completely rigged by ideologues mm -hmm. and it's easily debunked bring us any such study you have i had i actually had uh, a, an atheist who was obviously a marxist professor start going after me saying there's 35 peer reviewed studies have verified and i'm like show me these studies Present the study and defend even one of them to me. Give it to me. Let me look. And he wouldn't produce it and couldn't produce it. And I, it was obvious that he didn't that he either didn't have them or he knew they are based on the shoddiest uh, pseudoscience. Atheists, you do not have higher IQs. Mm -hmm. So anyway. I actually uh, shared this, and, and they always have excuses, and they always have qualifications to put on. So I, 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 I put, I shared this, and, and an atheist chimed in with, uh, "Oh, but those aren't the the uh, groundbreakers, you know, uh, the ones who won the Nobel prizes. It's it's the same crap you hear over and over, uh, you know, when when the uh, Elaine Howard Eklund research that so show that most most like." Most scientists are, are religious. They say, "Oh, well, they're not the members of, of the uh, National Academy of Sciences." So here you're claiming that 
you know, religious believers don't believe evidence and they can't do science because they just believe any old claim without examination. But apparently you need to be a member of the National Academy of Sciences to believe in evidence. I mean, you, you, they, they always they always move the goalposts to accommodate their conclusion. And this this is a classic example. This guy said, oh, yeah, those, those religious people won Nobel Prizes, but they, they weren't the uh, – they weren't the uh, uh, you know they didn't they didn't they weren't the groundbreakers. That's like uh, they weren't the groundbreakers. Yeah, wait a minute. The groundbreakers were century were over the last few centuries and were overwhelmingly religious. Hey, oh, look, Newton, look, Newton and Kepler and Galileo and Copernicus and, and, and Maxwell and, and you know uh, all of all of the Pasteur of. Uh, 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 Lemaitre, yeah, yeah I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. By the way, Francis Bacon, the guy who came up with the scientific method, was a, a Christian, yes. And well, they'll try and say that you know they were trying to free their minds from the primitive yeah. superstition, and eventually they freed the shackles with horse crap. Uh, by the way, oh, I see oh, our oh, friends. Another, another lies that they would have been killed if they had confessed their true atheism. Which give us proof of that claim. Show us your critical thinking skills. Yes, Show us proof of that, of that uh, extraordinary claim that they would have been put to death if they had confessed that they were true atheists, and that they would have been uh, put to death if they had confessed their true atheism. Hey, I see that our friend, the analytic alchemist, has quietly joined. Good evening, Mr. Alchemist. How are you, sir? Not bad, not bad. How are you guys tonight? Uh, uh, we're doing pretty good. We're kicking around atheists. Uh, just so everybody knows, analytic uh, here is uh, one of many, many. They're actually quite common these days. Uh, one of many, many former atheists. Uh, I, I assume you're still a former atheist, right? Correct. All right, excellent. You still want to, into the one one of that that kind of wacky Bible thumper religion stuff? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that might be a separate conversation. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just teasing. Okay, um, so well, uh, I, I think we've already beat this one to death. Uh, uh, but uh, atheists, you're not that good at science, and you're not that smart. Yeah, sorry, um, I, other... I hate to interrupt. But, uh, what, what was the claim? I, I came in like midway. Oh no! Well, we were just talking about the chart showing that um, you know, sixty-five and a half percent of Christian of Nobel Prize winners in phys, uh, you know, in physics, uh, were Christians, and uh, yeah. other other religions rather strongly represented, and atheists and free thinkers clocking in at ten and a half percent. Which, since they're about five percent of the population, to be generous at this point, that's you know, yeah. Well, They're punching above their white class. Well, I mean, that, that, that was sort of the whole point of man investigating the natural world to begin with because they assumed it to be intelligible because yeah. they believed that something intelligent was behind it. So yeah. you have to assume the intelligibility of the world in order to do science in the first place. Thank you. Yes, that was one. Actually, people have asked me what, uh, what, uh, what, are, what argument convinced me there was a God? And what I always tell them is what convinces one person isn't the same that convinces another. Um, and, and what convinces you initially may not be what convinces you now. To me, it's just so screamingly obvious that the argument from intelligibility is bulletproof. It, it, there, there is no rational explanation for the intelligibility of the universe and the fact that it just continues to do what it continues to do. Um, uh, there has to be some intelligence behind, behind that intelligibility. And unless we're projecting on it onto the universe, man. Yes. I will usually uh, cite two facts uh, pertaining to why I think there's a creator behind everything, and I think they're very simple. I think even someone who isn't, say, so philosophically or scientifically minded could understand this. Uh, one, the very fact of existence itself, I, I think that sort of <laughs> uh, cries out for some sort of explanation um, and uh, inquiry, right? Uh, and then two is just the beauty and complexity of nature. Yeah. Yeah. And then we can, you know, from there and I go. You just, you just pinged on another one, which is beauty itself. 
But yeah, right. the very concept of beauty. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, right there. But let's let's get back because we're doing this coverage from Freedom from Atheism Foundation. We want to cover the stories they have. But by the way, I just want to say, uh, uh, going back to the last story, I just want to say, do read up on Elaine Howard Eklund's research on on the religious beliefs of, of scientists because they're very illuminating. And you said. Uh, Atheists are slightly punching up above their weight class. That's not universally true when you examine different societies in Hong Kong, where, where they have a largely uh, secular society. Uh, the scientists are actually more religious than the general population. So, yeah, I think there is a mentality of people who are willing to question the beliefs they were raised with might be more, you know, uh, likely to become scientists or something. So in in a in a Western uh, uh, religious up, upbringing, that might make them slightly more likely to be atheists. But if they come from an, uh, an atheist background, that might make them slightly more likely to be Christian. So it works both ways. Uh, yeah, and and in reality, a dirty little secret in the sciences is true, especially among the younger PhDs. Uh, but also a, a growing number of older ones. If you really accept the, the implications of digital physics and quantum physics generally, which a lot of them do, once you carefully ponder quantum physics, you, if you accept that it's true, uh, 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 a guiding intelligence ultimately running things is really the most rational conclusion and is the only way to make digital physics or or quantum physics in general makes sense. And in an inherently theistic worldview, suddenly quantum physics can be made to make sense. So anyway, um, let's move on into the politics of this, because I get tired of hearing atheism is just lack of belief. It's not a movement. It's just lack of belief. We just don't want our views imposed on, you know, what you, we just don't want you to impose your views on us. We don't want to impose your morals on us. There is no agenda. Hey, look, the scumbag atheists are suing the Colorado Christian cake shop guy a third time. Yeah, yeah there's nothing time. ideological about that. <laughs> there's nothing ideological going on there at all, right? This is bullying, and those prating about with their phony constitutional arguments, they are phony. The words separation of church and state appear nowhere in the Constitution. And this level of hostility to religion would have been completely alien to America's founders and is completely alien to, you know, I'm an, I'm an America who's only in his 50s, and this way of thinking is completely alien to me. When I was an atheist, I would have been repelled by this. Yeah. In fact, when I was an atheist, I was repelled by things like this. And it was things like this that made me start thinking, there's something wrong with atheists because while I had strong arguments, especially with fundamentalist Christians, which I still do, um, I, I admit it, I do. I have real problems with fundamentalists. Um, um, but the, the even even in my atheist days, I would never. I would. This would have made me want to vomit. You know, this reminds me of my gay friends, of which I've had a few who want to vomit every time LGBT comes up because they just see it as a movement that's become ideological and bullying and intolerant. And this is ideological atheism on the hoof and it's bullying and it's hateful and it's intolerant. Yeah. Isn't it kind of weird that they want to tax the churches yet at the same time, they don't want the churches to have a say in the nation's politics. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> well, look, man, if you, if you want to tax them, cool, but uh, they're going to have a say now. And yeah. So they want to have their cake and, they, and eat it too, essentially. Another thing is that, is that churches are protected by the same uh, 501c3 tax exemption that protects uh, organizations like American Atheists. Mm -hmm. uh, some have <laughs> so, uh, yeah, they're, they're basically on, on the horns of a dilemma there, yeah. What you're essentially saying there, because uh, the next step will be no, no charitable funding, no, no, no religious institutions can be charities. That will be the next step, you know. And then, but of course, Christian charity will continue even on such a, under such a regime. Yeah. It will just become much more underground, which is what they want. It's just uh, so weird to spew such vitriol about organization uh, toward organizations that uh, provide these charitable means when a lot of these people uh, who do do that don't do any charitable work themselves. 
I know. <laughs> like, no, know. You, you, why do you get to have a say in, you know, your community or whatever? You don't do anything. Shut up. <laughs> they're, they're, they're doing, they're, they're playing the game. They're doing like Skylar fiction and Greg Banson and saying, we're here to make the world a better place while they sit around giving the most masturbatorily stupid. Yes. One YouTube analysis. video at a time, Max. <laughs> Unmasturbatorily stupid, academically irresponsible, ridiculously twisted phony fake debate after another making the world a better place <laughs> well, 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 we want to go for the adverb use use onanistic uh, i think the onanistic. 20th century has something to say about that <laughs> see you you can see you can you can see that deflating atheism grew up in a good catholic school because he recognizes big words like onanism uh, the <laughs> atheism pro atheist probably has no idea what words like that are. Um, they only know stuff about logic and fallacies. <laughs> All right. So anyway, study study after study after study has shown that 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 religious people give more to charity than than their secular counterparts do. And yeah. I love I love when yeah. atheists I love when atheists uh, uh, sit at home in in their air conditioned rooms. In their big, in their big comfy chairs, and, and wonder what what cruel God could have uh, uh, created a world in which, in which African children starve. <laughs> well, guess what? Guess who's feeding those African children? It's religious people. While you sit home in your big comfy chair in your air conditioned room. So yeah, that is some hypocrisy right there. Right. You would think for people who you know. Yeah. Think that this is the only life that you have. Yeah. Would do their best to increase the quality of that life for everyone else around them to, to their best ability, but they don't. Well, well the, the quality of their life would be right. over staying in their big, comfy, air conditioned room. Yeah. <laughs> uh, also, I, I want to say uh, that was about, gee, I'm blowing up here. These people will leave me alone. Okay. Uh, that was about the Masterpiece Cake Shop guy. Uh, I brought up another thing is, is the. Uh, Sisters of the poor, they will not leave those women alone. They yes, they do. They, I, I don't. I, I, I think Freedom from Atheism Foundation got that early, uh, later, a few weeks ago. But yes, they are again suing nuns. They like beating up nuns. I'm sorry, atheists like beating up nuns. And if you're an atheist going, I don't support beating up nuns. No, where are you in condemning beating up nuns and telling atheist groups to knock it off, you cowards? Yeah, I, I don't want to hear from any atheist who says I don't condone that. Shut up, get up and get active, or you get the you, you you're you're culpable. You, you 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 call yourself an atheist and you don't stand up against things like this. Uh, you're culpable. I'm sorry, and you're not a friend. Yeah, um, the, the the tax money they would get from from nuns from a nunnery for uh, 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 what is it, uh, uh, you know, contraceptives or whatever. It is pennies they would get from these nuns, but they're just motivated by this desire to humiliate them. It is sick. Okay, so let's move on to something a little more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, they do deserve all the kicking around they get, but let's see if we can get through these stories. This is going to uh, be a hard uh, podcast, Max. <laughs> it, it is. Well, I don't care because, really, it it's it's a political cult movement. Sargon of Akkad is in a political cult movement. So are most of his friends. Um, and I, I, I make fun of him, but I'm actually hoping to get an interview for him, see if I can get a comment from him because I'm writing an article. Uh, but I think he'll be too much of a coward. Most of his uh, people in his circle are because atheists are cowards. Um, so... Freedom from Atheism Foundation story says studies suggest that highly religious Christian couples are more sexually satisfied than their sex secular counterparts. Does it make sense to reject atheism if you want to have a happy and fulfilling sex life? Well, honestly, atheism can be rejected. I, I, I've interviewed one of the scientists who works at the Freedom from Atheism Foundation, uh, a, 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 a molecular biologist, actually. And he said, you know, he was working as a scientist. He began to question his atheism, and it was all over pretty quickly. Mm. You can question your own atheism. Um, mm. And once you do that, it's over. But in any case, this story is nothing new. Literally for decades now, study after study, survey after study, study after study after study after study, after study has shown 
uh, people with the uh, greatest frequency of sex going uh, late into life even, greatest frequency and greatest satisfaction of sex are heterosexual married couples who were virgins when they got married. Um, religious people uh, in general, though. That I mean, in what you just specifically ask. And hey, having one partner for the rest of your life is a pretty good deal. I mean, you kind of get sex whenever you want then, right? <laughs> well, you know what else? Yeah. Ideally, ideally, right. <laughs> yeah, well, for for most of us raised in the contemporary culture, it's a lost cause, right? I'm not, you know, I, I cat it around and I'm, I'm divorced and remarried. You know, um, I, I'm part of the whole sex culture, I've been part of it or contributed to it. I, I, uh, it's not good for you. The grand myth, I think the one that they sold my generation that, that was going around in, you know, like the 90s and stuff is you, and I don't know if this is, nobody even bothers with this now is, before you settle down with somebody, you should find out if you're sexually compatible. And I'm like, no, I, I to buy that, but no, that's actually terrible reasoning. There's that, that's terrible reasoning on, but 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 it mostly means that you're always going to be stacking up your partners against each other. You will not be able to stop yourself from doing it. You know, you can have your naughty memories of the girl that was really hot that one time, but then now your wife or whatever, your long-term mate has to live up to that. Um, it'll never work that way in, in in real life, and you are still increasing your risk of diseases and unwanted pregnancies and and uh, no matter what anybody tells you, there's always emotions in sex, unless you're a sociopath. Um, there's always huge emotions in sex, and it, there's never just sex. It's never casual. There's no such thing. And there's no right. such thing as a happy sex worker either. They don't exist. I mean, they may be real happy at the sweet cash for a few years, but man, by the time... Oh, yeah, most of them... Uh, yeah. Uh, like you said, after a few years, usually most of them, uh, after they make enough money to sustain themselves, they want to get the hell out of that industry. Oh, yeah. They don't really care about their clients. They can't anymore. And sex starts to turn them off. And it, it'll even get to where, because uh, I've talked to a number of sex workers and former sex workers, man. It, it, it gets, you know. Yeah. How many porn uh, actors and actresses have left the industry and have found God? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that too. And then, and then uh, but even the, or who just admitted to things like, oh, I had this weird psychological thing, you know, my 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 husband wants to have sex with me, and I feel like he should be paying me. It's kind of awful. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I'm not. I know, like, like members of my Facebook group. I, there are several members of my Facebook group I actually know are strippers. So I mean, I know I know some of them personally. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go. Uh, I'm not gonna. Well, you, know. you don't need to tell on anybody, but <laughs> no. if any of them are listening, just know he's not telling on anybody. No. <laughs> I, I've had my own stripper friends and, and hooker friends and cam girl friends. Not and and any Christians who are listening are shocked. I led a really well, long life, and I became a Christian only about. Well, can, 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 can I say? I, I under I get it. I get it. You see, you see people out there struggling with one hundred and fifty thousand dollars of of student loan debt. Meanwhile, you could for one night's work, you could bring you know six thousand of of tax free income. I get it. It's very appealing. Yeah. But, uh, what 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 happens when they work at it long enough is that they get a very poisoned view of men, and I've not I've noticed it with my own eyes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And sex, uh, and it's worse if you're having physical sex. And you just, you, but even just cam girling or or phone call, and, and guys get. I don't, by the way, there's a lot of guys who get into gay prostitution that aren't even gay, and you know act like it's no big deal, but it is. You know, <laughs> and, and well, a lot of get, a lot of them get raped into it. To be honest with you, I'm not saying every gay does that, but if you're in the wrong scene. Uh, a lot of these sex workers uh, come from broken and or dysfunctional families and households. The major in fact, it may be the case that boys are a majority of sex trafficked children that nobody wants to talk about because they always want to talk about sex trafficked girls. Mm -hmm. um, or they're like the girls, are, there, there's reason to think in some areas, boys are definitely the majority. And by the way, boys are the more frequent target for murdering in pedophiles. 
Um, and so, like, the girls are more likely to be just raped and not killed while being raped. Um, and these, the, the, this is stuff I know from my men's issues days. I was in a movie called The Red Pill, by the way. People should read that. They'll go see that movie by Cassie J. The Red Pill. Um, I, this is getting us off topic. Though. I was, I was going to say we started with this article. And no, that's except this is, it all goes into the sexual, it all, it all does tie into the sexual liberation culture. People seem to think it's brainwashing, but no, really, if you're raised in a society and a culture where you go straight for a monogamous relationship and you stick with it, even through the bad times or the good times, you will have better sex. And I'll tell you why, because you'll learn together what you like and you'll learn to get better at it together. Makeup sex is great. <laughs> <laughs> Makeup sex is also great, yes. Um, and I'll tell you something. This is one uh, people like Owen Benjamin are right for, right, right about. Getting your woman pregnant is the hottest sex you'll ever have, bar none. <laughs> Come get your relationship and sex life advice right here at Red Pill Relationship. <laughs> I know, right? I, I, I don't, don't, free of charge. <laughs> free of charge, yeah. Don't, don't, don't repeat my mistakes because I'm telling you there's no joy in my having catted about and been divorced and all that stuff. Um, had I been on a better path when I was younger, um, I mean, I have excuses. I didn't have the greatest upbringing in the world. But um, the bottom line is if you choose the stable life, you tend to be happier and healthier. So, yeah. I, I, I in the previous video, I think the whole like red pill movement is just basically people figuring out that tradition is what it was for a reason. It's not there to oppress you. It was there because it worked. Yep. Um, so here's another statement. Uh, let's see. Didn't he, did he already do this? Rock and Roll Hall of Famer Alice Cooper came to reject atheism and became a Christian late in life. However, he decided not to leave the world of hard rock because he says it's part of his testimony. Please congratulate him on his new faith. Um, well, I, I just to correct whoever's write, writing things on freedom from atheism, Alice Cooper con converted to Christianity quite some years ago. Yeah. This is not, um, I mean, it's, it's maybe it's news to you. But it's not news. To, I mean, I think I've known this for like more than a decade. Um, but in any case, it is cool. Because he goes out there and still does his old stuff, but and um, but is not anti-Christian. So there yeah, you go. the lead singer of uh, the band Corn also became a Christian a few years yeah. ago. Brian Welch. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I re I remember like hearing like 15 years ago uh, or or so somewhere around there that and, and Marilyn Manson was really giving him trouble because of because of his Christianity. So uh, Marilyn Manson's uh, kind of laissez-faire attitude does not extend to uh, people uh, practicing their own religion, apparently. Yeah. It's, uh, it's funny because I really am old enough to remember when we were being told that, you know, things like this, we just want acceptance. Yeah. We don't want to disrupt you. We don't want to recruit. We don't want to go after your children and, and yeah. but anyway um, well, when you gave them acceptance they turned around and uh to thank you they launched a full-blown attack on traditional values in your society mm -hmm. here that we have an example um you know we hear all this stuff about satanic hollywood luciferian hollywood antichrist hollywood little hat hollywood although owen benjamin should stop saying that because hollywood doesn't like pious observant Jews. But in any case, uh, let's move on. Aladdin star Naomi Scott talks Christian faith. I don't know how I would do life without my faith. And Freedom from Atheism Foundation thinks you, you admire her courage in speaking ab up about Christian persecution. She should. Um, yeah. They liked, they used to like and laugh and say, oh, you're in a Christian majority nation. Well, if that were true, isn't it funny how they do that? I've actually had him say that. You're a Christian minority, majority nation, so you can't complain. I'm like, wait a minute. I thought, like, most people weren't religious. And that you represent <laughs> all non-religious people. Uh, but it, they, they always do that game with their statistics. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, people, Hollywood hates Christianity. And it's been obvious for a long time. And there's people of other religions there. Um, but this is something I wish more Christians would notice pious, observant, orthodox Jews are also hated by Hollywood. 
They really are. They're either lampooned. They're usually just lampooned and, and joked about. They don't like the observant Orthodox Jews. Uh, they don't like is, Christians uh, either, huh? Hollywood is a uh, like overtly satanic. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm going to call it because I know somebody was about waiting for me to say something about Jewish Hollywood, but. Listen, no Jew. I, my Jewish friends are religious, and Hollywood hates them. So yes, there's a large ethnic Jewish element, but it's not. It, they hate Christians and Jews. Um, you know, they they hate anybody who believes there's a God. And yeah, there's a lot of them who are into hinky um, occultism. That's not. In fact, have you noticed the weird cultural programming on this one? That if you say a lot of Hollywood elites are into weird occult religions and uh, uh, and anti-Christian religions, people will go, "Woo, you're just a conspiracy nut." Have you noticed people will do that to you when all you have to do is open up the tabloid magazines or listen to them talk? A lot of them are quite openly Luciferian, um, Kabbalist, um, or some other kind of occultist. They don't hide it. Right. It, it, it's similar to the pagans and Gnostics in the second and third centuries uh, that attacked the early Christian movement. Uh, yes. You know what? Here's the reality that atheists can't face. Most people are religious. And we'll never stop being religious. Most people are smart enough to know that the spiritual matters and is real and the supernatural matters and is real. Um, it takes real commitment to deny that. And yeah, mostly Hollywood is run by anti-Christian people. Uh, the, Jews, the, the, the Jewish ethnic types there um, join the non-Jewish types there in, in detesting Christians and detesting Orthodox Jews. It's very noticeable. Um, but that, that is not to slight, you know, any, any number of, of young people who go to Hollywood, you know, looking to fulfill their dreams. They, they may be uh, uh, naive about, about what it entails, but yeah, certainly there are a lot of like young actresses and actors who, who go in with the best intention. Yeah. Yes. Now, here's one I absolutely agree with that uh, makes atheists furious. They say, uh, a Harvard study reveals a religious upbringing is better for kids' health and well-being. Uh, and Freedom from Atheism Foundation says, indeed, raising your child athe atheist might be an act of child abuse. I think it certainly would be. Yeah. And I say openly, they're better off being raised as like a Hindu even. Um, uh, and if any Christian wants to get angry with me for saying that, let's just I'll just tell you that I've met more than one person who started the spiritual journey somewhere like that and ended up meeting Jesus along the way. It's better to, it is literally just, just taking it in purely psychological terms. Indoctrinating a child to be atheist is putting foot binders on their imaginations. Literally, even if you kind of are an atheist or an ag agnostic, you're literally telling the kids thoughts they're not allowed to hear, think about, or be exposed to. And that if they arise spontaneously, you'll tell them they're wrong. Like, for example, if a child tells you that they saw a ghost, would you actually be so audacious as to say you imagined that? Do you know that they imagined it? Well, no, especially if they say, well, you know, if they, if they say a ghost keeps coming to them. Do you just immediately think, well, I'm going to get drugs for my child and take them to a psychiatrist? Or maybe there is something spiritual and I should consult some experts on the spiritual. But Max, all babies are born atheists. <laughs> <laughs> and all babies are born atheists, yes. And all bricks are I've atheists. never heard a more, <laughs> yeah, I've never heard a more just retarded claim in my yeah. life. Babies Go ahead and ask a baby, what are you? An atheist or a theist? Goo goo gaga. Ah. <laughs> that, 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 I don't understand any of those things. <laughs> that, that's the thing. Like, like if, if I met like a child who was like raised by wolves or something, and they knew nothing about any sort of cultural programming, and I just said, you know, uh, uh, there's a God exists who loves you, uh, their first inclination is not going to be saying, you know, well, you might as well believe in Santa Claus. It's a ridiculous story. Bro. No, what they're going to say is, Really, I don't know. I don't know what God is. Do you want to tell me more about it? You know, 
they would they would ask for more information their first reflex would not be to dismiss it out of hand so the whole idea that we are born atheists is just ridiculous yeah yeah kids have this natural tendency to want to learn so yes if you bring up something foreign to them usually they they have a million are questions <laughs> they are really curious that's right and I, I always hear these atheist tales even from some like spurgy types that are just like they could never answer my questions okay well you probably had some odd questions that are different because you have autism or something uh mm -hmm. i'm sorry just to be rude but really because these are pretty natural questions most kids can answer you know most of them can be answered here's what's most relevant here um for thousands of years uh, across multiple cultures and regions there has been something existed that the ancient latins called the sensus divinatus the sense that something divine existed something ultimately is run something's mm -hmm. run, ultimately running the universe something's there something's making it go kind of thing not just created in the first place either but i mean like something is there present that is responsible for reality and that is a universal sense and found across religions. And 20th century scientists like Jared Diamond and others, or not Diamond, Jared Barrett, Jared L. Barrett, and quite a few others have found that in children, they develop that sense between the ages of two and four, typically, um, uh, depending. And, and, and around the same time, they're developing language. So they're, they're, they are usually frequently already grasping for a word for God because they have it. Mm -hmm. And Diamond, uh, Barrett has shown that this is true independent if the child is born in an atheist household, and a non-religious household, a religious household, um, that the children, uh, even children not you know raised in non-religious homes, exposed to the idea quickly at the very early age, automatically grasp it. Not Jesus Christ necessarily, but there's a God, there's spirit forces, there's something beyond this reality that's, that's operating things, that, that matters. It's universal in children, they develop it. You know, who, who, you know what though, they can lose it from trauma. They can lose it from trauma. And there's evidence showing that too, that natural sense, I mean. Um, so- yeah. I had a friend who had a pretty traumatic past and it was weird what happened to her because after uh, those events, she became more, uh, how she describes as sensitive to the spiritual. Uh, thought that was an interesting little happenstance there. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. And we, we see stuff being pressed and pushed in the mainstream press and out of dodgy social science organizations. Now trying to suggest all the opposite. We've debunked some of these on earlier shows. I know. Uh, you and me deflating, uh, suggesting that kids, kids raised Christian are, 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 are more violent and less less uh, inclined to share. But I mean, if you look into those, oh, yeah. studies, they're so flimsy, stupid, with so many presumptions. Um, it's just part of the general collapse of the social. It, it was, yeah, it, uh, another another uh, uh, thing to point your uh, finger at is is uh, clickbait headlines. You know, uh, a lot of times, like the whole thing is is religion makes children less altruistic. The whole thing it, it took a study that was extremely limited in scope about children sharing stickers, and it was at a you know, it had uh, like a thousand subjects. It was a tiny study. It was just about kids sharing stickers. But they knew that was a headline people would like and share the hell out of. So, yeah, they said religion makes children less uh, altruistic. And, and what do you know? Every single atheist in the world uh, liked and shared that, that article. So. Yeah, most people will just read the headlines and they'll be like, oh, I agree with that, and then share it without reading, you know, through the information in the article. So. Exactly, exactly. Um, okay, let's see. We should get going. We've already almost got to our hour already. Uh, let's go to the next story. I love this one. Dave from Computing Forever. Dave from Computing Forever, who still will not acknowledge me or return my mails or my comments, even though, gee, we were in back – uh, Gamergate days and uh, in the same crew that uh, uh, was with Sargon of Akkad who eventually turned on me and a few of others who were Christians. We got brutalized by those guys. More than one of us, not just me. Back in Gamergate days, you remember those days, Dave? 
does it actually matter? A lot of you got famous kind of writing on that Gamergate trend and uh, left a lot of people, not just us, behind. Uh, I wonder if your buddy Sargon will ever stop lying about the Red Hill religion team or dodging us, Dave. I'm curious. Anyway, we'll see if he answers that because I think the Freedom from Religion Foundation should be recognized as a group. That, or sorry, the Freedom from Atheism Foundation is a group that should be acknowledged as one that's faced constant harassment and deplatforming attempts on multiple platforms. They've managed to stay alive on Facebook for a while, only I think because they buy a lot of ads um, and they don't run at a profit at all. So in any case, I was pleased that Dave Cullen, uh, and like I said, I've had run-ins with him and the people in his circles for years. He has finally come back to Christ and he has come back to the Catholic Church and totally acknowledged that publicly. And I'm really glad that he did so. I hope he goes back and looks at some of the people he and his buddy Sargon stepped on, though. So, I really hope he does. I know that sounds downer, but uh, Dave Cullen came up with some people who were pretty nasty thugs. And I'd like to see him acknowledge that uh, while he's being the free speech hero, supposedly. That's another guy who needs to be challenged. But I'm very glad he found his way back to Christ. God bless you, man. Yeah. So... Anybody else have anything they want to add to that? Nope. Okay. Good for him. Yep. Yep. Uh, Faith in Siren Sharon Harmony says, uh, oh, we just got we got a gift here from uh, William Lake Craig. Oh, no, we're not going to be able to play the William Lake Craig video on this stream, but William Lake Craig, Craig is usually very, very good. Uh, he, he really is usually very good. I think some of his arguments are limited, but when, but 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 some of them are knocked down, drag out, great. I've never been impressed with the Kalam argument, but some of his other stuff is great. So, oh look, that's right. We've had a a, a pastor arrested for preaching against homosexuality. Um, this has actually happened. Um, and we've seen other examples and other stories in the news of, uh, I believe this is up in Canada, and we've yeah. seen stories like that of just, pe oh, no, in New York, too, just people being, you know, pulled off the streets and arrested for preaching the gospel and, you know, stating what Christians have always thought. Um, but it was one of those cases where, like, they will assault people and demand they answer, and then when they get the answer they don't like, they'll they'll, they'll make a fuss in the scene, and they'll just keep harassing people. Um, and uh, it, it has led a lot of us, like, I've supported gay rights my whole life. I know a lot of my Christian friends listening are like, what? Well, you know, people change over time. And I still have friends and family members, I mean, who are in that you know lifestyle however you want to put it and i can't just disown them and castigate them and treat them like garbage some of them are christians yeah um and it's just like um okay the issue is complicated but when i see that lgbt flag anymore uh uh i flinch i see uh so many well there's probably a little more than a handful in my area, but I, I see the vast majority of the local churches here fly the uh, rainbow flag. And it, I'm always like, what? Well, <laughs> it there's, me for the, a loop, man. there's the double part of it, too. I, I used to be a more liberal Christian just because I was hanging on to love of friends. You know, I was never gay. I was molested, but that's another subject. I never turned me gay. Um, but I always had friends. I came up rough for anybody who's listening, and I saw the seamy side of life really a lot. Most people listening to this have no idea how much of a messed up background I come from. Um, but, you know, no felonies. So there's at least, you know, that I, no, none on record. <laughs> I mean, oh, folks chime in and say none that he's been caught for anyway. Not, not none that I'm willing to cop to. Um, <laughs> he stands alone in, in, in the uh, red pill religion group as the only one who has no felonies. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, uh, I, I've seen a lot of things. I've known drug addicts. I've known whores. I've known prostitutes. I've known suicides. I've known drug overdoses. I've known killers. I've known rapists. I've known the raped. 
Um, no. You're, you're almost writing a song at this point, yeah. Huh? You're almost right. It's, it sounds like a song, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. It's a country song, right? It's a really, it's a. Speech. <laughs> but uh, again, I how how can somebody just put a guy in jail for saying I'm against this? What happened to free speech, if nothing else? It's a, it's a horrible myth, too, that Christians are responsible for homophobia, supposedly, whatever that is. Um, how would we be? Homophobia is rampant everywhere in the world, under every religion and under major atheist regimes. Like, once again, China comes in, an atheist regime. It's not the only one, but an atheist regime, uh, you don't want to be gay in China. I mean, when they're being nice to you, they might castrate you. They, okay, here in America, they give them an entire month to parade yeah. around and do whatever they want, literally. So yeah. if, if you're going to claim that you're oppressed by religion in this country, you are so detached from reality. It's not even funny. And you go to some place like China, and I, I'm not demonizing China. This is just, you can go read this. This is in Human Rights Reports. Is, gay rights groups will call this out and say this that you don't want to be gay in China. If you're in certain areas, you're in, in, in certain really restricted ways, you're kind of okay. But essentially, no, you are, you are, you are roadkill if you're caught being gay in most of China, including the cosmopolitan areas. I mean, if you're lucky, they might castrate you and let you go. I mm. mean, it just, it's... What do you think of more... Uh, fitting punishment for the people who bring their children to these parades and dress them up in drag. I, yeah. I, I, I don't even, I don't like telling people what to do morally, sexually. I really don't. Uh, but at some point, how low do you have to go on the depravity scale before you go, all right, listen, kids in kids stripping and, and dragging in the gay bride parade probably is bad i mean isn't that the moment when you as even as the atheists go my god we need jesus <laughs> right <laughs> right <laughs> i mean I just look I'm man you don't even have to believe it. in his divinity you, you just please adopt the values that he taught mm. I, I i'll even go this far i don't you may quote me on this if i hadn't gone christian um, I would be looking at something like that and going, Allahu Akbar and <laughs> Shahada. There's I, only I, one God and Muhammad is his messenger. <laughs> no, please don't. I mean, that is not, I'm not saying that. I mean, really, no. Jesus Christ is exactly who he said he was. The divine logos incarnated. It happened. But if, if I didn't know that were true, I could ease. I mean, I would turn Muslim on a dime. Uh, and, and, and I wouldn't be the nice kind. <laughs> Beheading would work uh, for those perpetrating such things for me. I'm sorry. That's it, this is all theoretical. Yeah, and, 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 uh, and, and I'm not even. I'm, I, I'm I'm being rhetorical. So don't tell anybody I'm threatening anything. I'm mostly being rhetorical because I know even most Muslims are going to do that. But my God, yes, well, children in drag. Uh, go ahead, Eric. Oh, no, I was just going to say that in, in most Muslim-majority countries in the Middle East, if you're gay and they know you're gay in, uh, in those places, uh, you will get beheaded or you'll get thrown off of rooftops to your death. Uh, now, imagine what they would do if you <laughs> tried to expose a child to, uh, to that sort of lifestyle there. It's, 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 and I can't, there's this notion that uh, Hindus are supposedly more tolerant. No. I have a friend who grew up in an Indian village, as a, in a Hindu village, and he said, no, that they, they caught you on something like that. The entire village would just uh, run you up on the nearest tree and, and, and maybe have a picnic on your lynching. Um, there's zero tolerance in that you know, Hindu society. Um, and so, again, stop blaming the Christians, too, while you're at it. Um, <laughs> I kind of like this one. Uh, uh, it's a little crazy. Uh, it's another meme. We can screen share. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Just the guy going to. Have you noted that this is something about atheists too? Um, Do you know I'm an atheist? They are always wanting to bring up their atheism, like it's the most important thing in the world about them. Because it's a religion. Yes. 
I, 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 it's the religion, man. And I'm speaking to a strongly evangelical one at that. Yes. Yes. <laughs> they speak to convert. That's why they hate Christians so much, man. They're stepping on their freaking, uh, their, um, turf. And when it comes to, uh, Oh, what is it? Preaching. There it is. When it comes to when it comes to yes. preaching the gospel, <laughs> can't stop teach, preaching the gospel of there is no religion, there is no God. Um, Therefore, man, that's what it is. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, I could imagine a street corner where where a street <laughs> epistemologist and, and a street <laughs> preacher are fighting it out. Yeah, <laughs> right. Um, the 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 amount of energy they they put into this and then they do you know then I'll, you'll even hear some of them say but we're against tribalism and we're against identitarianism and they're all identitarianism about their atheism it was noticing this kind of crap that made me question my own atheism because i just noticed how dumb it is and how weird it is and there's two of us on any atheists listening there's two of us on the stream here because analytic uh, analytic you used to be an atheist too yes and and I, i'm just being honest some christians get mad but i'm like you don't have to go to jesus to get out of atheism just figure out how dumb atheism is first then look at the other religions but please do look at jesus I'm not saying <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, uh, at least feel free to explore for God's sake. Um, He's a very interesting man. You should check him out. Even some occultists do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, that, 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 that if you're going to get into Jesus, watch what, which Jesus freaks you get into. Some are ha saner and more stable than others. <laughs> And, well, and, we, we, no, those, those, those based heavily on tradition, on divine tradition, tend to be very stable. I'm just saying. Anyway. The, 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 the most consequential man of history by any uh, rational survey, you know. There you go. Yes. Uh, yes. The ones who stay on tradition are some mystical sons of bitches, man. Yep. <laughs> the what one of the things that is happening now and i can just hear some uh some marxists and some libertarian dweebs screaming theocracy <laughs> because the bulgarian bavarian government is putting christian uh, crosses back up as part of their cultural her heritage and legacy uh, a number of european countries are doing this by the way a large no, number of them are doing it european, yeah they're bringing back the uh, and not and and uh, well yeah it's it's a nascent movement in Western Europe but it's happening in Western Europe too it it, it has it hasn't crested like it has in let's say Bavaria here or Romania or or where it's gone just wow the the, the Romanians are really embracing the Romanian Orthodox Church and and. Hungary and Poland are both strongly embracing Catholic identity, um, and this is a growing trend. By the way, the new, the the, the recent, the, the the Prime Minister of Australia, who just won the election within the last week or two, was an openly professing Christian, mm -hmm. and made it part of his identity. And the press, the secular press down there, was wringing its hands and saying, "Oh dear, what can we do? An open theocrat." Um, it's, you know, isn't it disturbing that people would have, you know, but, but he won. Mm. And so, yeah, religion is making a comeback worldwide. Well, of, is. of course, people are embracing uh, different religions and spiritual philosophies because hardline materialism is unsustainable intellectually and otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm telling you, quote me on this, man. I'll become a Shintoist. At least you'll be interesting to talk to. <laughs> we'll say that. Just please just oh atheists by the way you're so boring boring is for so so long and you're so boring <laughs> they really are oh, though, boring man. huh they really are man they really are i i, I, I the ones the most of the ones that i've talked to are and, and i always get them too like uh, like in private conversations usually they will usually tell me like well i have this holdout for something that might be behind the universe and i'm like well then you're not an atheist you're, you're like a closet agnostic if anything <laughs> Which is, which is actually, agnosticism is a, is a defensible position. 
Although at some point uh, there will be an accumulation of There'll evidence, be writers. <laughs> yeah, uh, but, but but it's at least a rationally defensible position. Right. It really is. Um, and really, when you notice how much atheism requires you to disbelieve in just to sustain it, it's ridiculous. Um, okay, well, I guess we haven't anything here to say, but here's a, a former atheist who's now a nun. So that is like, well, actually, I got, you got to say that that is just hardcore. <laughs> I'm definitely not an atheist. <laughs> All the way to none. Okay. That's a, a good. Hardcore, sister. High five. Uh, <laughs> actually, I, that, that was a fun video. I did watch that. I did watch that. Um, that's like becoming a full-blown Buddhist monk and living in the mountains somewhere in Nepal. <laughs> you well, know, kind of, uh, kind of. Oh, and here's some good news of a sorts: um, the Satanic Table Temple to challenge the Supreme Court ruling on fetal remains. So, okay, so let me clear. Let's be clear about a few things here. First off, Satanic Temple alleges that they are uh, an atheist organization assuming you take a satanist's word for that which is a dicey proposition um they still what they've just done is declared their brand of atheism is absolutely a religion because they will go yeah. to court and they will take a religious position they have monuments and they have churches they are, yes and they are for being able <laughs> They are for being able to experiment on and maybe more with human remains. That is what they actually want. They say that's in the enlightened interest in society of humanity. And if you buy it and you and, and people, I don't know. I don't know how much I have to tell you that somebody who calls himself a Satanist probably lies a lot. Yes. And if the devil looks at you and says, ha ha, there's no God, do you believe him? Yeah. Even the demons know and they tremble. <laughs> I am, I, I, I've encountered enough people, including multiple ex-Satanists at this point. Um, and they'll all tell you that the Satanists recruit among atheists. And uh, when you get to the higher levels of Satanists, uh, Satanism, they cease with the charade of the no god stuff they really yeah. are into rituals and occult forces the, and so it's like guys they're a religious group they're a they, they claim to be enlightened atheists because there's no god and they're taking positions on things like you know experimenting on humans yeah well i mean you can justify anything these days in the name of "quote unquote" science, right? I, I shouldn't have to pull out a Bible or anything. What, what's doubly funny, what's trouble funny about this one is, I'm quite certain I could get Hindus on my side on this one, and people will say, "Well, Hinduism is is idol worship, and they're already worshiping Satan." It's always more complicated than that with something like that. Um, more to the point, this is clear, so clearly evil, even by like most of the concepts of karma and reincarnation I have read would suggest that you're doing something really bad here. <laughs> um, it, 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 they're outright evil, dude. Yeah, well, yeah when you have evil. cultural Marxism running rampant, which propagates uh, moral relativism, you know, this sort of stuff is just so easy to, you know, normalize in, in, in the public because morals aren't objective, right? I mean, <laughs> to each their own. <laughs> well, uh, we, can, we can be more specific than this because because uh, it's clear for all these Satanist organizations, abortion is their topic. Yep. Their number one cause is, it is. the notion of abortion. You'll, you'll notice this from, from uh, the Church of Satan and the Satanic Temple. Uh, this is very crucial for them. And, and we have you know, reports of Satanists who said that they did like satanic ceremonies and abortion ceremonies uh, in, in abortion clinics. You can take or leave that. Okay, that, that's kind of, that's kind of you know, hearsay or something. Why, why would anybody, if, if not literally in the clinic, I mean, but, I mean, why would anybody believe that would never happen? Yeah, 
Yeah. Why would anybody with the millions of abortions and I mean they're they're shutting down rather rapidly now, but I mean they used to be all over the place you could get abortions. You think nobody ever got freaky with blood rituals ever? No. I mean, you have how many celebrities that romanticize that stuff in their music videos? <laughs> yes. I mean, come on, go look at some, some of the, they, they literally romanticize it now. Katy oh, Perry no. has a video with literally nothing but ancient Egyptian occultic symbolism oh. in it. And I think, yeah, you might know the one I'm talking about. It's really hard to miss. <laughs> Katy Perry, yeah, it's, it's the one, that it, 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 samples, uh, it samples a song by a Christian rapper too, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Hey, 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 here's the nice little devil word trick. We're, we're not really a religion because we're just atheists. There is no God. There is no God. There is no God, said the Satanist. Um, and, they have the tax exempt status of, of a religion. They have it, and they are able to lobby for moral values that they believe in because they believe it's morally you know, enlightened to uh, experiment on. <sighs> yeah. But that's not them enforcing their morals. That's just them being enlightened. Why does it, what does it take to get the average atheist to snap out of it? Yeah. <laughs> it's just, hey, there's something whacked going on here. There's this, this is my point. This is my point. Is that you'll often hear uh, uh, pro-choicers say, uh, you know, uh, we should not ban abortion because that would be a violation of of the separation of church and state. Okay, that's crap. Because uh, uh, opposition to abortion is not a religious belief. But this is what's interesting is if you look at the uh, uh, political beliefs of Christians, let's say, quite honestly, face facts, there's a, a, a huge segment of Christians who are, who are pro-choice. Probably like, like 30 to 40 percent or something. I don't like it, but that, that's the truth. But 100 percent of, 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 of Satanists... Are are pro abortion? Yeah. So yeah. Why would why would that not be the religious belief? It's it seems like you know getting taxpayer money and putting into Planned Parenthood that would be the violation of, of a separation of church and state since you're basically feeding uh what is essentially a, a, a satanic sacrament which is abortion. Yeah. Well, whenever uh, whenever I get into discussions about that with like atheists online, sometimes which I really try not to do, it's really bad for your mental health, man. <laughs> but yeah, you know, yeah, whenever that happens, and they're like, "Well, this is a this is just religiously motivated," and all I do, uh, I, I just tag multiple uh, secular pages uh, that are specifically uh, about pro uh, pro the pro life position, and most of them are atheists, and I just tag those pages and like, "Well, what about these guys?" Because there's tens of thousands hundreds of thousands even of them that are not religious and they're pro-life so and they, they just they, they don't know what to do with that information exactly. it just blows the whole this is purely a religious thing it just blows that out of the water yeah the same thing with the scientists i mean i mean you can't expect them to change their minds with evidence because there's no one more doctrinaire than the atheist i but, actually do though i mean when you look at this we're the satanists there is no god we're pro-choice on abortion. We're pro-choice on not just abortion, on, on experimenting on, on 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 these tissues and using them for medical purposes. Um, you know, are you looking forward to fetal tissues in things they inject in you? Uh, yeah. Are you just ready for that one? Might have said, maybe it's happening already, and they don't even bother telling you. Who the heck knows? These guys would think it was a good idea. Um, it's somebody just notice. If you're godless, these people take godlessness to the extreme and look look what they're into, man. Mm -hmm. They have identifiable politics, and it's always evolving death. Isn't that That's what happens when you remove the logos as the foundation for a given society. Mm -hmm. Also, you, you can find a, a video on YouTube of, uh, of uh, uh, pro-choicers at, at, uh, at a counter-protest to... Uh, to uh, pro-lifers who, who are singing uh, "Amazing Grace" and the and the pro-choicers are chanting "Hail Satan, Hail Satan." So, yeah. it's ridiculous! Uh, it's ridiculous. Hey, listen, this has been great, but I've just realized we've run long. We really didn't want to go much more than an hour. I actually have to go. I have another scheduled item that I so we I have I have less than five minutes. Okay. So we really, 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 really need to wrap. Um, final thoughts from you, analytic alchemist. Um. Don't 
do atheism, kids. Drugs are safer. Yep. Uh, deflating. Any de deflating atheism? Any thoughts? No. Uh, have a good night. Everybody, please be sure to go find the Deflating Atheism channel. Um, and uh, otherwise, well, please check us out on BitChute. Please give us a like and a subscribe while it lasts on YouTube. Please help us out on our fundraiser. It really would help us out. Uh, the guys at Freedom from Atheism Foundation have been running at a loss for years just to keep it going. And uh, we really could be using an, uh, an upgrade in our equipment and to get onto some kind of censorship-free network. So... Uh, we are going to try to see if we can get the intellectual dark web's attention. I bet we can't, but we'll see. So anyway, give us a like, give us a subscribe, check us out on redpillreligion.com, and God bless everybody. God bless.